Welcome to the Cadence Beginner's Guide to Angling. In this series of short instructional videos, our aim is to show you all the basics you'll need to get you started, and most of all, catching some fish. Enjoy. Welcome to another episode of the Cadence Beginner's Guide to Angling. And today I'm still water fishing and it's winter. So the temperatures are down and the conditions are tough. The method I'm going to employ today is a form of float fishing called waggler fishing. And it's the style of fishing that hopefully will get you bites and fish on even the toughest of days. Okay, so let's have a look at the wagglers that I tend to use when I'm fishing on still waters in the winter. You'll notice that there's different types of wagglers, different shapes, different capacities. These are straight wagglers with quite thick tips and I tend to use those more in the summer when I'm using bigger baits like pellets and when you're catching the fish that are feeding in a much more positive way. So for me, when I'm fishing on a still water like this in the winter, I much prefer to use an insert waggler because they're so much more sensitive. You can get different types, like this is a peacock waggler, which is unloaded. And when I'm fishing on still waters, I tend to prefer using a loaded waggler like this one. You can see that it's already got this weight built into the float. That makes the rig much more efficient, less prone to tangling, and actually makes the float cast much more efficiently, perhaps like a dart, because the, the weight is so streamlined and part of the float. Another great advantage of these crystal wagglers is the fact that you can change the tips, so you can change the colour of the float. And that can be really important to enable you to be able to see the float correctly. So why is waggler fishing an effective method in the winter. Well, I'm fishing today at Packington Fisheries and this is a very prolific lake but we've had a sudden drop in temperature and that will often mean that the fishing will become a lot harder as the fish become more lethargic. Ordinarily I would probably start by pole fishing on a prolific venue like this but I know it's going to be hard and the advantage of fishing a waggler float in these situations is you can fish further out into deeper water and the waggler float's perfectly designed to enable that to happen efficiently. So to fish a waggler on a still water like this, you need to ensure you've got the right tackle. And the rod I'm using today is our 13 foot combo match rod. And it's a brilliant rod for fishing on still waters like this because it's very versatile. 13 foot's pretty much the accepted length for match rods. So it's long enough to enable you to cast the distance required and fish in deeper swims. It's fair to say that some shorter rods like 10 and 11 foot have become very popular on still waters. And they're typically when you're fishing at close range and when you're fishing up in the water, like with pellets in the summer. And the reel that's supplied with this rod is a Cadence CS5 reel and I've, it's a 3000 size so it's not too big and it balances the reel and the rod absolutely perfectly. The great thing about this 13 foot match rod is it's got a lovely soft tip which enables you to use finer lines and hooks like we are today particularly when you're fishing in the winter. It's also got plenty of power in the rod so that when you do fish with heavier line, bigger hooks and target bigger fish like carp, you'll be okay to land them without any problem at all. So I'm casting around about 20 metres out today and the float I've selected is this 3 gram crystal insert loaded waggler and you can see that I've hardly had to have any shot around the float. 
I've actually got two number four non-toxic shots and then I've got a number eight either side of it. And I like to do that because the number eights just help prevent those bulk shot, the number fours, from moving around on the line. The main line I'm using today is three pound line. And that's really important because if you were to fish with a heavier line like five or six pound, which would perhaps be fine in the summer when you're using a heavier float, you'll struggle to cast a lighter, more finesse float like this. Certainly casting the distance that we're achieving today would be almost impossible with a thicker main line. And the actual rig itself is so simple. So I've got those shot around the, grouped around the, the float. And then all I've got down the line is two number eight shots today. That's giving the bait a nice slow fall through the water, just like the maggots that we're feeding. And it's also enabling me to register the bites because I can see the shot settle. And that really leads on to a very key point in that certainly when you're fishing in the winter, you need to dot the float. So shot the float. So you've got very little of the float showing. Something like that. And that means that the float setup that you're using is very, very sensitive. And you'll register the bites. Sometimes it might be a, just a small lift bite or the float will just sink. And in the winter, that might be all you get. So make sure that you dot your float down. So we talked about having a finesse setup when you're fishing in the winter, certainly when you're fishing with maggots like we are today. And the hooks I'm using is a size 20 and the hook length is three pound. It's actually got a diameter of 0.011 millimeter, which is quite a bit thinner than the main line. So the hook length is gonna break first. And as you'll notice, these are pre-tied. And that's a good tip in itself for all beginners because the hook's tied perfectly, the knot's perfect. And when you're fishing in the winter, it really helps because if your hands are cold, it can be difficult to tie small hooks. So how to cast a waggler on a still water? The most efficient cast is the standard overhead cast. And basically, you just open the bail arm in the normal way, trapping the line with your finger on the spool. And you're gonna bring the float behind you and use both hands. So the top hand is gonna push and the bottom hand is gonna pull. And I'm looking where I wanna cast. So I'll just try and demonstrate that in one movement. Just swing the float behind me and then smoothly push and pull and cast the float into position. Now another thing to explain, which is really important, is what we call feathering the line. So once I've made the cast and the float's flying through the air, just before it hits the water, you stop the line with your finger. And that will break the float and it will make the float drop into the water without a big splash and most importantly, it will spread the rig out so you're not tangling. So I'll just try and demonstrate that for you. So a nice smooth cast. Just before the float hits the water, I trap the line on the spool with my finger. The next thing I'm gonna do, which is really important when you're fishing on a still water, particularly on a windy day like this, is to sink the line. So I put the tip under the water and with two or three turns of the handle, I'm actually sinking the line off the surface. And that's really key, because if you don't do it, the wind will move the line and then move the float unnaturally. And on days when I'm waiting for a bite, I'll actually utilize a rod rest like this. So I'll sink the line and I'll keep the rod tip under the water whilst I'm waiting for a bite. And that really, again, helps to keep the line under the water and out the way and maintain a good presentation. So an important consideration with any kind of float fishing is to understand the depth of the peg that you're fishing. And obviously the best way to that is to plumb the depth. And obviously when you're fishing out with a waggler, out of, away from the rod tip, it's difficult to use a heavy plummet. And the best tip, I think, for plumbing the depth 
is to just gently squeeze um, a triple A shot onto your hook. That triple A shot is obviously going to act like a plummet and if I'm fishing too shallow it's going to pull the float under and if it's on the bottom the float's going to sit normally. So the great advantage of that is you can just cast it normally and it won't affect how you're casting and you can very quickly determine the depths and the contours of your peg and that's really important probably even more so in the winter because you are searching out for that deeper area in your peg and at the moment I'm fishing I'd gone a little bit further out so the float had gone under and now I'm just drawing it back into position and the float now has just popped up so I know that I'm fishing probably just about two or three inches over depth which today has been the best way to fish. Feeding on a still water in the winter is so important and the way I've fed this today fishing the waggler is I'm just loose feeding maggots. I'm loose feeding perhaps 10 to 15 maggots every cast and I'm being careful not to feed too much and not feed too much in one go because it's so easy to overfeed the fish in the winter and by just gradually introducing maggots like that you can build the peg up and as is often the case you'll start off by catching small fish like small roach and then as the day progresses you hopefully attract more fish into your swim you can catch some bigger fish like small carp and skimmers and bream. Another consideration when you're feeding and you're feeding little and often in the winter is to be patient. Because the water temperature is so cold it can take a couple of hours for the fish to respond so you need to be persistent. Waggler fishing, a great winter method, give it a go.